and welcome to this uh, fourth lecture of uh, uh, global navigation satellite system and application course. And this is a, a third part on, on how position is determined by the GNSS uh, receivers and uh, mainly in this uh, one we will be uh, discussing error parts also. So, uh, that comes here and uh, this is uh, basically how data, uh, how the signals are propagated uh, through this uh, from the, uh, the satellites GNSS signals uh, uh, from uh, satellites towards the earth and they have to pass uh, through the various layers of atmosphere. So, this propagation part we will be mainly focusing and also uh, the error part as well. So, they uh, basically it starts from near vacuum or uh, of a space and uh, the signals because uh, these satellites are especially like GPS satellites are 20,200 kilometer away from us and then later when signal starts coming towards the earth then uh, the signal has to encounter with various layers of atmosphere uh, which is in between the earth. As you can see that uh, uh, when satellites are sending signals in an ideal situation uh, the signal should come straight to the receiver if a receiver is installed on a say in this one uh, uh, receiver is here, but uh, it does not receive uh, uh, sometimes or many times it does not receive directly. Uh, so, when it passes through these two layers ionospheric layer and tropospheric layer, uh, so that uh, there is a reflected uh, signals are also there and there are refractions are also there through these uh, atmospheric layers. And then uh, that means the additional time, uh, the delay in the signals and that means the, the more uh, the overestimation or the, uh, the time is taken more that means the distance will be calculated more may not be the real one. And therefore, as you recall that in previous uh, lecture we have discussed that this time delay uh, through this uh, atmospheric layers which is also uh, corrected uh, through these uh, uh, already available models because real time data may not be available and these are the dynamic layers and therefore, uh, time delay uh, is also uh, estimated through these models. And uh, sometimes these signals uh, may get reflected from some building also or some mountains or maybe a forest and these obstructions will also add the path, additional path to the signal uh, which received by the receiver. And that means uh, again uh, recall that uh, the when this range is larger, the time di uh, difference is large, a larger sphere is uh, will be constructed imaginary one and then you can you can understand that how uh, then it will give you the wrong position basically. So, determine to in order to determine the accurate positions, we need to know the range to the satellites and this range is coming basically from time difference and this is direct path distance from the satellite to the user equipment. But as I have just mentioned that it is many times it is not really direct path, maybe a reflected part, maybe a refracted part and so. And therefore, the signal will bend when traveling through the earth's atmosphere. And uh, as you can also see here that uh, it is more exaggerated in uh, from bending point of view that uh, there is a ionospheric layer is shown here and uh, then GPS receiver is here uh, and uh, when the signal is coming through these uh, refraction uh, there will be um, uh, there will be a change in the path as well as uh, uh, time extra time or the pseudo range is increased and uh, more uh, more distance will be calculated that means uh, less accurate position. So, this bending increases the amount of time the signal takes to uh, travel from satellite to receiver. In the previous discussion uh, we have also uh, this uh, discussed this mask angle. So, if uh, if uh, we take a low mask angle uh, that means this uh, refraction will be more and uh, therefore, that uh, a uh, very small uh, mask angle may not be uh, uh, good for such purposes. So, this uh, uh, this also uh, should be kept in mind. 
and this uh, computed range will contain this propagation time error or atmospheric delay error. This atmospheric total delay will be there and sometimes it is very difficult to identify that whatever the delays are there the ori and the sources uh, sources of these delays whether it is because of these at my ionospheric and topospheric layers or because of uh, some uh, you know extra path which has been added because of these obstructions. So, since the computed range contains delay errors and it is not exactly equal to the equal range, uh, so we refer as instead of true range we refer as a pseudo range. And this atmos ionospheric con uh, contribution especially from ionospheric layers of atmosphere to the most of the atmospheric error. So, this says the maximum uh, errors are introduced during this uh, ionospheric layer propagation and resides between uh, from, from earth's surface towards the space 70 to 1000 kilometer above the earth's surface. So, it is a quite long uh, distance that means a quite thick uh, ionospheric layer is there for bending of these signals. And free electrons basically resides in this ionospheric uh, layer which influences the electromagnetic uh, wave propagation. So, they these free electrons basically creates problem in the atmospheric layer. But interesting part here I will touch uh, very briefly and uh, that uh, these delays in ionospheric layer in the pseudo ranges uh, of these satellites are also being exploited nowadays by the scientists uh, for uh, they are using these uh, uh, delays and uh, to, uh, to model the ionospheric layer because at different because at different locations the delays are different. So, uh, the, uh, through these delays ionospheric layer can also be modeled or uh, these uh, thickness of these uh, layers can be estimated and basically in near real time and, and that can give some advantages and some people are also using uh, these electron perturbances which are happening during an earthquake event and they might be influenced by an earthquake event rather than a, a simple ionospheric uh, uh, delays. So, uh, people are also going in this uh, total electron counts and uh, they, they have identified that when earthquake occurs these are uh, these change there are changes in total electron counts within this ionospheric layer and which can be estimated through permanent GPS or GNSS stations. So, a blessing in disguise and uh, though for position estimations this is a problem this is an error but that error can be exploited for some other purposes. So, each and every part of the GNSS signal is being used for different purposes time example I have given this ionospheric delay example I have given of course, position and simple timing also one interesting thing is about the frequency for anybody who is uh, developing some equipment or would like to calibrate their equipment which are based on some frequency then for frequency calibrations also because standard frequency available throughout the globe round the clock and therefore, those uh, calibrations with those standard frequency can be done about uh, different equipment. So, that information uh, or that uh, part of that signal can also be used for calibrations. So, there are various applications of and uh, these uh, signals from coming from these navigation satellite systems. Ionospheric delays as you can understand are frequency dependent and it can be virtually eliminated by calculating the range using both L1 and L2. So, if the your signals are available as indicated here that uh, there is a high total electron count TEC I have just mentioned related with the earthquake also and uh, added uh, transmission delay which uh, in L2 and by, uh, by using these two L1 and L2 and uh, this can be uh, virtually eliminated or minimized this uh, uh, delay factor. So, I know uh, this uh, uh, tropospheric the lowest uh, layer here that is the lowest layer here the tropospheric layer of the earth atmosphere contributes the delay due to local temperature pressure and relative humidity and these things keep changing in a cloudy conditions the temperature or pressure may be different relative humidity may be different and they may also bring some additional uh, 
and delays in the time signals to uh, to be received by a receiver so topospheric uh, delays cannot be eliminated the way ionospheric because uh, this l1 and l2 frequencies they behave differently because these delays are frequency dependent so they delay they def behave differently through these uh, uh, ionospheric layer and therefore using these two uh, we can eliminate but uh, uh, tropospheric delays uh, cannot be uh, these errors cannot be corrected but uh, while employing some model uh, these uh, delays can be minimized based on certain predictions so it is possible to model the tropospheric delay then predict and compensate for much of these errors so as time is passing people are developing new and new ways to remove these errors because uh, uh, data may not be very perfect but how best we can exploit how best we can estimate the position by employing whether some model or some other concepts and so on so forth so signals can be reflected on the way to the receiver and this is called multipath propagation multipath propagation uh, uh, is there and these reflected signals are delayed from the direct signal as uh, we have seen already that is strong enough can interfere with the direct signal and these techniques have been developed whereby the receiver only considered the earliest arriving signals and ignore multipath signals which arrives later so to some extent and uh, this uh, multipath propagation can be avoided by this uh, uh, technique by which that the earliest arriving signals are only considered for position estimation uh, then the uh, signals which uh, are received later however however uh, these cannot be entirely eliminated a perfect uh, positioning ideal positioning may not be there because some error component some delays component will always be there like troposphere delay uh, though through models we can minimize but not completely remove so in summary here we are gns error sources that affect the accuracy of pseudo range calculations so if uh, the if there is some problem with the satellite clocks then in position estimations we may get error of plus minus 2 meter but if uh, there are orbit errors because the, after all these satellites are moving objects in space and they sometimes they drift from their position because of many regions and therefore uh, the error range may be Uh, plus minus 2.5 meter ionospheric delays can also introduce errors of about uh, plus minus 5 meter tropospheric delay not big as compared to ionospheric delays errors but anyway plus minus 0.5 meter and these are very generalized average estimates of error ranges receiver noise because after all receiver is also having antenna there may be signal to noise ratios and other electron electronic component may bring some errors some noise so this receiver noise can also bring some error component in position estimation of roughly plus minus 0.3 meter multipath error can add uh, uh, the error of one point it is not necessarily that uh, all the errors will occur at the every time sometimes uh, some error may uh, may become bigger or some error these are the sort of average values and uh, but uh, all errors may not occur at the same time so the degree with which the above uh, these pseudo ranges errors affect positioning accuracy basically depends largely on the geometry of the satellite being used as we have discussed in the uh, gdop the geometric dilution of precision that uh, these errors as i was mentioning in the sky plot if uh, these and uh, positions of these satellites are well distributed throughout that uh, circle then these errors can be minimized to some extent it's a good practice to uh, uh, to um, um, wait for some time get the good uh, dilution of precision and then uh, record the position so receiver can uh, uh, advance or delay its clock until the pseudo ranges to three satellites coverage at a single point as uh, here that uh, first uh, adjusted range to a uh, satellite a the first one then adjusted to the satellite b 
and then finally adjust it to range satellite C. And it keep adjusting and keep uh, calculating more accurate and accurate position as you get signals from more and more satellites. So th through this process, the satellite clock has now been transferred to the receiver clock, eliminating the receiver clock error. So in the very first uh, few seconds, uh, all this uh, the error which is in the receiver clock can be removed and then you get the receiver now has both a very accurate position and very accurate time with minimum three or four satellites. And when you extend this principle to a 3D world, we will need to range a four satellite to compute a position. So x, y position can be determined initially by first three satellites, fourth one will also give you elevation and also improve your x, y position. Now, due to receiver clock error, if there is, the intersecting points between the ranges of satellites A and B do not match with the actual position. So, if this error is large, then the actual position is here, whereas computed position would be here. And that means wrong estimations about the position. So, the receiver clocks are not really and nearly as accurate as satellite clock. Of course, they are having atomic clocks. These are having simple electronics clock, uh, our receivers. So, but uh, their typical accuracy is only about five parts per million. So, atomic clocks on on uh, space vehicles are more accurate. But in few second times, our clocks are synchronized with those clocks, and then we start getting good signals. So, when multiplied by the speed of light, as we know the resulting accuracy is within plus minus 1500 meters. Now, uh, when we uh, now compute the range of third satellite, the point will not intersect to a signal computed position. So, the, the, it is almost now the same scenario as we have been discussing in back bearing concept. So, that uh, instead of all three these lines pseudo ranges cutting at one location, now you are having a triangle here. That means I am somewhere or receiver is somewhere within this triangle. So, therefore, uh, you uh, that means some uh, at least from one satellite, the this uh, uh, the signals are not uh, as accurate as should have been. And that the pseudo range is having large error. So the receiver knows that the pseudo ranges to the three satellites do not intersect due to receiver clocks. And uh, if this is the situation, the receiver though might be receiving signals from three satellite, but it will not give you a two D position. That is X Y. Uh, location. So, it will wait for another satellite and if the third, uh, fourth one cuts at uh, earlier uh, two ranges, then it will start giving you two position, a uh, 2D position, then three, uh, 3D position and so on. As uh, already uh, briefly discussed about selective reliability, which was introduced intentional errors of up to a hundred of meters into publicly available navigation signals initially up to 2000, May 2000 and uh, uh, this disabled as already mentioned on 1st May 2000. Uh, there is another system was introduced uh, for land areas as well as for coastal areas through a augmentation system. So, this uh, first time it was introduced in uh, since 2000, year 2000 and through a VAS, WAAS that stands for Wide Area Augmentation System and that uh, provided accuracy of 2 meter uh, that is horizontal means X and Y, 2D position. And now this, uh, this concept of augmentation of uh, signals, ground based augmentation system like in India we are having for coastal regions we are having Gagan. Now satellite based ag augmentation systems are also coming as VAS which we call them satellite based augmentation system SBAS which are also coming and these signals are transmitted live all the time. And basically these signals these are sort of a, 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 they are like permanent stations and these signals satellite based signals are coming from geostationary satellite. So, they are synchronized with the position of the earth. So, all the time round the clock they are providing uh, signals uh, about for to Im in order to improve the accuracy. So, if, uh, if I, I am not using 
these augmentation uh, signals, then I may get a accuracy say within 10 meters. But if I start using these augmentation accuracy, maybe from S bus, which is ground based, is a little cumbersome. But uh, uh, using these satellite based and using those same frequencies, L1, L2, or L5, then my accuracy improves to few centimeter. As a initially with wide area, that is ground based augmentation system, they are there now satellite based, and all these we will be discussing further. Uh, if we employ this differential GNSS, then our accuracy can also improve to centimeter. Now, uh, even uh, employing these SBAS, that is satellite based augmentation system, uh, a simple G, uh, GNSS receiver can give you a differential accuracy that is in within centimeters. So, there are now a lot of improvements are happening. SBAS, uh, uh, the satellites which are available for under this SBAS systems, they are also providing signals. Now, the last part of this discussion is the GPS errors or GNSS errors. So, G, G, uh, GPS errors are a combination of noise, bias and blunders. Noise errors are the combined effect of pseudo range, uh, pseudo random noise, maybe plus minus 1 meter, noise within the receiver plus minus 1 meter. And uh, these errors might be there because of noise in the uh, system. Bias errors are the satellite vehicle uh, or the satellites, navigation satellite clock errors uncorrected by control segment. If control segment has not taken care for some time, then that error may erupt and can reduce your uh, accuracy part as well. So, this bias errors and that is why these uh, control segments have to keep a complete track on the uh, clock part or clock of all these satellites. So, then uh, the errors can be minimized. And if there is an error, bias error because of uh, uncorrected by control segment, that can result to 1 meter errors in position plus minus 1 meter. As also discussed this topographic and uh, topospheric uh, delays that is uh, plus minus 1 meter position error might be there. So, uh, this uh, as we have already seen that different layers are there and because of uh, bending in the signals extra time is taken and that can add one more meter in the uh, error part as well. And uh, we have also discussed that L1, L2 can be used to minimize the errors due in the uh, off ionospheric layer, but it is difficult to reduce uh, errors in the troposphere. So, some models are used. Now, position estimations uh, if uh, no, only noise error is there because uh, earlier I, when I was showing a table I said all errors may not occur at the same time, but suppose all errors occurs uh, these three noise bias and blunders if these three occurs together, blunders means I am using a wrong uh, spheroid, I am setting a altogether a wrong uh, system and uh, then start using, then we call as blunders, which we will see uh, later. So, noise, when if there is a noise only, then this is the triangle which is showing my uh, supposed to be position and I am getting position here and there, but not very far. But when noise and bias, bias through the uh, SB clock errors, then my uh, this triangle is here and my position estimations are somewhere else. But if noise, bias and blunders, all three are there, I am I have chosen wrong sprite, I have chosen uh, wrong uh, coordinate system and other things, uh, projection systems, I may get a completely uh, uh, very bad uh, position estimations, my position supposed to be here, but I am getting position here. So, uh, it is not necessary as I already I have mentioned that all errors will occur together. Sometimes, maybe, sometimes, may not. Now, multipath errors uh, uh, because uh, the reflection from some buildings or mountains can also error, add errors for 0.5 meter position error. Multipath uh, uh, can be uh, because uh, signals, uh, it is very difficult to identify whether signals are coming directly or indirectly through this reflection. But if it is there, there are techniques which we have uh, just dis uh, discussed that the, era, uh, the signals which reaches first are considered and signals which reaches later are not considered 
uh, of different satellites. Blunders can result in errors of hundreds of kilometers as uh, just shown in the previous figure and uh, these might be user mistakes including incorrect geodetic datum selection can cause errors of 1 to 100 meters and geodetic datum basically the reference ellipsoid surface that defines the coordinate system. So, if I like a, instead of like you know that a, if I take the example of GPS then it a, a, it is it uses the WGS84 system and uh, in default settings uh, the UTM coordinate system is there and uh, uh, you know word, word geodetic sprite is used. But like if I compare my position with the Indian uh, survey of India topo sheets, older topo sheets then uh, uh, the sprite which survey of India topo sheets have used is the Everest sprite. So, Everest sprite and word geodetic sprite 84 they are having different. Uh, parameters and therefore, my position estimation compared to my topo sheet position may be different. So, I need to set or convert my position which has been determined using uh, this uh, Everest and uh, this word geodetic sprite into my uh, uh, Everest sprite and also in the coordinate system the default uh, might be coming in UTM whereas, I might be using in uh, latitude longitude and that too through the projection. So, uh, then the projection which survey of India older topo sheets used and uh, that is Mercator polyconic projection. So, that projection I have to set before I note down or record the position then only I can compare. So, if I am uh, using a different system for position determination and I am comparing that determined position with the uh, topo sheet which is based on different system of course, then I will get lot of mismatch. So, that we consider as under blunders. So, these things have to be taken care in order to avoid uh, blunders and get uh, uh, better positions. Sometimes may be something wrong with the hardware or the software or app which we are using uh, may we have some bugs or may be some failure which can also uh, cause errors of any size basically. Now, this uh, dilution of precision we have already discussed. So, very briefly I will go uh, through this one that dilution of precision is a numeric value expressing the confidence factor of position solution based on current satellite geometry. Lower the value the greater the confidence in the solution and uh, can be expressed in the uh, following forms that uh, GDOP with is uncertainty PDOP and then HTDOP or horizontal uh, dilution of precision and uh, other dilution of uh, precision. So, the time is there. So, HTDOP when only latitude longitude means only horizontal we are talking then HDOP. The main point here when these receivers also estimate the DOP the minimum the value lesser the value smaller the value it is better this thing has to be remembered. And their time set also, so uh, TDOP can also be there, uncertainty of clock offset parameters. So, those things are also there. So, this GDOP, which is error caused by the relative position of the satellites in space and how they are shown in a sky plot. And uh, as uh, one can see here, that uh, uh, this is not a good uh, GDOP, but satellites are uh, located far apart as in same concept as in back bearing then uh, I am having little better GDOP and uh, again they are located in a, in a very uh, small space very close by then uh, not good GDOP and uh, if they are spread over in a sky plot they are distributed uh, throughout these circles then I get a good GDOP. Now, geometric dilution of precision this is a vertical dilution of precision the error is vertical position determination is here horizontal is here and then when you go for 3 D position this is how it is determined. So, these things matters uh, about uh, the spread of the satellite you can think in terms of a sky plot and spread of satellites. Another example the same way that uh, though you are accessing signals from 4 satellite your receiver is getting signals from 4 satellite, but they are very close by and therefore, poor GDOP wrong estimations or 
inaccurate estimations of position. But the satellites though they are still full, but they are spread and if I in a sky plot there will be a quite good distribution of these satellites. So, I am getting good GDOP. And this is typical sky plot which uh, I have grabbed through uh, a receiver and this is how generally you see that ID of these uh, satellites are also written there and uh, uh, sometimes they are also colored. So, if you uh, see that uh, like uh, here uh, black one these satellites are available and being used. So, this is a uh, uh, this is what it is a uh, sky plot is showing. Second is that the blue colored one are available, but not used because the signal quality is not good. So, when you go for a sky plotting in through that interface or whatever the software you are using, most of these software will support this uh, sky plot. So, if you see that then colors are also given and that can indicate whether those satellites are available. Like in this case red color one settle these satellites are unavailable. That means, as per Almanac, uh, the prediction of the satellite that these satellites should have been here in the sky within the where I am located or receiver is located, but they are not there. That means uh, that I have shifted my position, I have to wait for some time, and also they are in the edges of these circles. And this the outer circle is the near horizon, maybe uh, uh, you know 5 or 15 degree, and this mask. Uh, from horizontal is there and so this is near horizon and this is 45 degree above the horizon. So, the target should be in the sky through sky plot that these satellites should be distributed and mo most of these satellites if this is the interface then should show in black background and that means my position estimations is going to be very very accurate. If it is not there suppose this is the exact scenario then wait for some time because these are on the periphery uh, of or near the horizon these satellites will come somewhere in these circles and close to inner circles and then we may get good signals. So, waiting is the good solution for getting good position estimations. This is one interface through a smart mobile uh, which you can see the sky plots are here and their colors and other things are there. Uh, since uh, this uh, uh, particular receiver was uh, ca uh, is capable of receiving signals uh, from uh, this uh, GPS receivers which you are seeing through a uh, flag here of US, then you are having a GLONASS of Russian satellites. And these uh, uh, bars are showing the strength of the satellite, the numbers are showing the ID of the satellite and uh, these are showing whether they are being used or not or it should have been available these colors are indicating and the same time in third screen you get the position and other things as well. So, these interfaces are uh, there in most of these satellites are there you, you get the position very easily and uh, all those parameters data current time is important more than 4 satellites are being used as it says that all 8 satellites are available all uh, in this case 8 were used here, 6 satellites are available, 5 are being used and good uh, uh, position estimations are there. Another interface and uh, through this sky plot, so you are having now uh, signals from 5 GPS satellite, Navistar satellites, you are having signals from 4 GLONASS satellite and uh, 5 from Baidu satellites and one uh, supposed to be there and this is flag representation of Japan. So, that is there, but uh, currently no satellite is available uh, from that. Uh, sometimes we may get, sometimes you uh, may not get because uh, this uh, QZSS which is Japanese system is a regional system, whereas GPS is a uh, global system, this is also global system and this is also global system. So, these signals from these satellites uh, if receiver is capable of receiving signals uh, from this L1, L2, N5, then you may get signals from various satellites simultaneously their signals are used for calculation. Like in this scenario, uh, 15 satellites are being used out of 21. In this one, 13 satellites are being used for position estimation and uh, out of 15. As you can see that uh, this GDOP is shown 3 meter 
and when th only 13 are being used, it is shown as 15 meter because the spread of satellite is not throughout this sky plot. They are mainly, mainly close to the inner circle. So if that improves, then you get this thing. This is how the, uh, the signals and other things are there. And uh, the, you can identify uh, most of the things of uh, these satellites. And uh, multipath or uh, hindrances, we have already discussed bad visibility. Suppose uh, the satellite uh, we expected as per almanac is here, but it is behind the mountain, so no signals are coming. It is behind the building, again no signals are coming. So obstacles such as mountains and buildings block the relative weakness as uh, signals. Uh, different errors uh, ranges are there, 1 meter uh, SB clock, 1 meter uh, SB ephemeris, select availability which is currently is not there, so 10 meter error is completely gone and errors uh, may be uh, with the calculations, multipath and so on and so forth. So this brings to the end of uh, this uh, how position is determined uh, through GNSS receivers and uh, thank you very much.